Hello and welcome to another book review video. I hesitated on doing this one just because I'm just going to go ahead and be honest. You know how when you read a word and you pronounce it in a certain way in your head and then it turns out that that's not how it was supposed to be pronounced? That's what's going to happen with this. Um, I hope it's pronounced Venic Astrology, but I may be wrong. I've never heard it actually pronounced before. So I am familiar with, you know, the, the Western astrology a lot more than this one, but I did at least know that this existed. And I have been curious about what the differences were. Sorry. Yeah. And I have been curious about what the internet, what the differences were. And so I was pleased to find that it lists the key differences between the Western astrology and the Venic astrology. And for an example over here, here is a worksheet, side drill versus, side drill is what the Venus uses, tropical chart calculations is what the Western astrology uses, and here is like a little worksheet to help you figure out your birth chart. Alright, so differences between the two, science and spiritual tradition is this type, versus entertainment is more what the Western astrology has evolved to be, such as, you know, looking it up for, like, in the newspaper, how it used to be, but now it's online. Like, what is your astrology reading for the day? It, is, it seems to be generally viewed by the public as entertainment, whereas in India, the Vedic astrology is linked more to the religious and spiritual beliefs. Eastern versus Western cultural influence. Modern Western astrology draws its main sources from ancient Rome and Greece, whereas this one uses Indian teachings. And the chart calculation methods are already uh, kind of referred to that. The Venic astrology considers the relationship among three celestial bodies, the Earth, Sun, and Moon, and uh, the frame of, that is the sign real zodiac. Western <coughs> astrology calculates charts using the tropical system and the four seasons. The tropical horoscope begins with the vernal equinox placing the sun in the sign of Aries. So that is definitely the one that I'm more familiar with. Uh, there's differences in the birth chart styles. There's differences in the planetary aspect, the retrograde planets, and fate versus free will. Okay, so there's a lot of information, the next few pages, um, the sun, the moon, Mars, it goes through each of the planets, for instance, here's Venus, and it says the age of maturation, I'm guessing that means that this is when the, per the person would typically be considered mature, is 25. And for Saturn over here, the age of maturation is 36. Alright, so that was the fundamental meanings of the nine planets. And now it goes over into the signs of the zodiac. So here's Taurus, and then it says the sun in Taurus. It gives you the dates, and it gives you a little information about it. And then chapter 4 is the houses. And there's 12 of them, and it gives you a sort of a chart, a breakdown of the houses here. And then chapter 5, the lunar mansions. I didn't even know that that was a thing. And it gives you a nice little chart to follow there. I don't know enough about any of this to know what it means. I would really need a lot more time to delve into the book. I know that in the Western, the one that I'm more familiar with, I'm an Aries. I don't even know if this follows the same, like, dates, so I don't know if in this one I would still be in Aries or not. I'm interested to find out, but the, I, I have looked through the book, this is not my first time looking through it, but I haven't delved into it in detail to try, I mean, astrology is kind of really complicated to me, it's hard to fully understand, and I mean, I'm still trying to figure out the Western kind. This is a lot different. 
but I do like how this one is rooted more with, uh, it, it, carry, carry, it seems to carry more weight, like this type is more spiritual, and just more, it seems more rooted in, what's the word I'm looking for really? Taken more seriously, then you're kind of, if you're into astrology here in the U.S., then you're going to be kind of looked at a little kooky, you know? But it seems that Eastern culture is ingrained with a lot more spirituality. Chapter 6, Understanding the Vedic Birth Chart. Hmm, this looks so complicated. I mean, just look at what is on these pages. I mean, it looks like I'm doing math here. This is complicated looking. Right, chapter 7, just some final notes. And there's some further reading. I'm definitely keeping this. I'm interested in delving into it more. I normally go ahead and try to get my reviews done because I know that the authors are waiting for the reviews because that's helpful to them. So I want to go ahead and get my reviews done and then I take my time to slowly, you know, go through the book and like this is one that I'm going to keep and do that with is what I'm trying to say. I don't keep all the books. I give a lot of them away. I get up to eight books a week normally to review and my house would be overflowing with books more than it already is if I kept all of them. So some of them I do pass along. This is one that I'm going to keep and enjoy delving into further. Alright, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.